Now this is my 88 Jeep Cherokee with a 6.2 liter Chevy diesel in it and I've been having issues with radiators ever since I got 6.2 in it. Um, I got a cheap aluminum one off of eBay because I was worried about cooling and it started leaking within a week from where the cores meet the tank so then I got a uh, Champion radiator off of eBay again and it's the one uh, in the middle there and it started leaking after about a week and you can see kind of the brown looking spot there is actually where it's leaking out of the cores because it doesn't matter how many times I flush this block it keeps getting coolant rusty colored coolant and also on that side so oh, and those two I don't know if you can see them there actually cracked completely so they're just spewing antifreeze out so I got a hold of the company that I bought them from on eBay and they actually sent me this one over here for free shipped it out next day after I contacted them um, for warranty wise because it was in the warranty period but then this one after about two weeks and I even I went to a 180 degree thermostat and low pressure radiator cap to try and make it live better but this one still after about two weeks it's just now started leaking uh, where the core goes is tank there you can see a little brown spot so I decided I'm just gonna go ahead and just try a stock Jeep radiator see how that works out they've been known as well to leak they got plastic tanks and aluminum core and they've been known to leak where the tanks connect to the core but I just picked one up from local O'Reilly's for $109 and I'm gonna give it a shot see how it works out if it works great if it doesn't then I'm gonna have to look into some of the brass copper radiators they have out there but they cost quite a bit more or the aluminum one from Flexalite but that's pretty steep at around $600 before shipping for the radiator videos of the buildup of putting the 6.2 in the Jeep here. I'll just take a little video here. That's the uh, fuel filter and a fuel pressure regulator down here. Using the stock Jeep in-tank fuel pump. I use that regulator to take it down to 7-8 PSI, what's required for the 6.2 diesel intake pump. That whole thing of wires there is all out of the truck that the engine came out of had to build my own headers because the stock manifolds and I tried Humvee manifolds and all kinds of other things that wouldn't work so I ended up using the Humvee manifolds and some exhaust building kit for an airplane actually from Great Plains Aircraft to get the right size tube and built some headers the ones here actually wrap around the engine mount and the starter Um, that's the factory battery location. Um, use the 
battery mount plate out of the Chevy truck and put another battery over there. That's the uh, the Jeep power steering pump, custom built brackets to make it mount on the 6.2. Yeah, I mean it's pretty tight down in there, but she fits just barely. And you can see down in here, you can see that nice square spot. That's where I cut the top of the fender and pushed it down and made the mount for the battery go in there. Got some coil spacers and Rubicon Express front coil springs. Bring it up a little bit. And I think that's about it for now. Eventually I plan on putting a... Uh, Eaton E90 supercharger on it. Okay. Yeah, got the supercharger there. And this is supercharger plate that I have cut out so far. I still need to drill and tap it for the studs. This will bolt to the intake and have it duct welded between it and the other flange once it gets in there. 